Neville Martin. And I'm Richard Barrett. And welcome to another Guitarist Tone Lounge. Today we've got a couple of fine orange amps uh, to show you. Mine happens to be black. Yes, and mine is in the original sort of orange colour. Yep. So As, they're the same underneath? Yeah, they're the same. Um, th these are the Custom Shop 50, and they're essentially um, an amp that's two amps in a way. Yes, it, not, not two channels, but one amp that you can switch to a couple of different configurations in the power amp. Uh, mm. I, it seems to me that they're a no compromises but no frills type of yeah. affair. Yeah. Um, so there's no effects loops or anything like, no. like that. No. These have a negative impact on the tone apparently, you know, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I tend to buy into that when Orange say something like that, because I think they know what they're doing. I um, think the more circuitry that you add on to anything, you, you must somehow degrade something somewhere, you would think. I've heard that in several places, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. And, and I don't think that these are aimed particularly at somebody that wants a multi-channel, multi-effect no. type thing. Though, I mean, I don't see why, there's so much power available, I don't see why it couldn't be run as a pedal platform. You would just not set the controls for game. But that seems to be the way most people run their stage amps now. You know, the, the amps tend to be um, a pedal platform. Yes. You tend to get your sounds from here. I brought a very small pedal board uh, with, the, with, with me to just show one or two things. Um, but by and large, people do run their, their rigs that way. I suppose nowadays, in, a, don't in they? a sort of session gig or even in a, in a kind of function band, I suppose you want to be able to cover all those bases and a, and a few bands where they're, they're just using um, kind of modelers and things. Uh, yeah. But this is very much more old school. Yeah, very, very much, very much. And on stage, you'd probably find your settings and leave them and then run everything else from the floor and from your guitar. So many people now are getting into that old school way of doing it. You know, you yes. ride the volume yeah, control, yeah. you ride your tone, tr mm. tone control, you mix and match your pickups. I really like that. I mean, it's, it's <sighs> the older I'm getting and the poorer my eyesight's getting, the more of an issue it's becoming. But I just yeah. find a little dab of luminous paint on the volume control at a couple <laughs> of sweet spots tends to do it. And I yeah. really like that. I think that there are yeah. sounds available, you know, on a quality electric guitar, there are sounds available that you, won't get. I mean, and one of the things about the 30 watt mm. mode of this apparently is it's much more responsive to that kind of yeah. thing, as well as to the touch, but to the volume control. So I guess we'll probably yeah. have a run through that in a while. But yeah. um, the EL34 amps, aren't they? Yes. Um, mm. These operate in two modes. In 50 watt mode, they are class AB. In the 30 watt mode, they're class A. So that again, that harks back to that classic British 30. Absolutely. British 50. I mean, I think that one of the things that I'm getting from this is that the 30 watt mm. load, obviously that lower powered. Mm. So I think with the amps flat out, then 30 watts is slightly quieter. Mm. But I don't think that particularly notices on the way there, if no. you see what I mean. It it's doesn't. It doesn't. So it's not, um, it's not like some kind of power soak type thing, is it? No, it's, it's not a low power, mm. high power uh, switch or a version. They're, they're literally two slightly different types of amps within the same shell, and yes. they offer you slightly different voices, I suppose. Yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, again, like, like um, the, the oranges tend to be, it, it, it's simple. It's, there's the nothing here to confuse, so it's pretty logically laid out. And um, orange always use these graphics to tell you what's what. Here we've got the master volume, which is the big blaring speaker. Next to that, we've got a clenched fist, which is a, a kind of, we well, can describe what that, that does. Well, um, high mid drive um, is what I'm, what I'm told. It's a little bit like a presence control. You notice the difference a bit more when the master is up and, yeah. and noticed it a bit more on the single coils yeah, I noticed that, of, yeah. of this. Yeah. I mean, perhaps if I, play a couple of things with it yeah, down do, do and then yeah, bring it up. That, yeah. it, it just adds a bit of high fidelity edge mm -hmm. to it. So it's halfway up at the moment. I mean, I've got this amp set fairly driven. Um, these aren't powerful pickups, so it's a bit like 
the old mm. school strat sort yeah. of school of thought where you'll beef it up with the amplification. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll just yeah. demonstrate where I am. <laughs> I've got the guitar's tone control down just a little bit, mm. just to stop it from being too edgy. Uh, and if I max that, and then I minimum mm. really quickly. I'll do that again without speaking in between, and you'll really get that. And I think the louder you go, the more you notice it, but it's definitely yeah. much more apparent on, on the single coils. And the fuller it gets, it's like, I mean, on my pedal board here, I've got a, an analog man king of tone. And I sometimes, often in fact, use it, one of the sounds on all the time, just as a kind of slight sound coloring mm. device. And I suspect you might use that for a similar kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, you know yeah, those, yeah. those um, boosts you used to get on the old, um, the old, um, thingy boxes, you press, it had a loud button on it and it just boosted oh, the bass yeah, and loudness. boosted the tr yes, yeah, loud. Absolutely, and it's yeah. a kind of, it's a little bit like that. And I yeah. think you'd probably choose to, uh, to find the spot you like it on a single coil amp and find a spot you like it on a yeah, I think I would, I would sort of and use it like make a mental note yeah, and just change it. I yeah. mean, it's not boosting anything, but it does definitely make the the sort of low mids more apparent when you've turned it down a bit, yeah, especially at volume. Definitely. Um, well, we, yeah. we we've kind of worked out. We can't see anything written down. We worked out that that's a punching fist, so it's giving you a bit more punch. Yes. Which yeah, it yeah. certainly it's seems to do. Mids. Moving on, you got the classic um, orange EQ, which is the the treble clef and the up, the middle both pointing yep. to the middle, these arrows that is, and then the, the bass clef pointing down, which is really like quite sensible, isn't it? Yes, and you and learn that, it very Yeah, and then on the end you've got the big gain control, which is kind of... And if you're not sure what it is and max it out, then you won't forget again what it no, is. No, you won't it's forget. Pretty you won't effective. Forget. It lets you know <laughs> in no uncertain terms <laughs> what it does. Um, and the thing we've said before with, with uh, Orange Amps is that Wherever you are on any setting, it's a sound that's usable. Yeah, always. Mm. Or, always. Yeah. Even if you set things right to the maximum limit, you know, the gain, the, the, the tones, the volumes, all of the EQ settings, the, it's a usable sound that in the studio you might choose to use that sound. You might want to kind of get a more scooped sound from a humbucking guitar, for instance, or you yeah. might want to add body to a single coil guitar. And you wouldn't tend to use that live like that. You tend to go find a sound because people don't usually, they're not going to see people going back to their amps on stage too much, well, no, do you? No, no. I mean, I've, I've heard various things about people who are lucky enough to have a crew and like mm -hmm. massive backline that they might use a different amp. But I think yeah. the thing with these is that they are very much part of the signal chain and you can control them in that old yeah. school way yeah. from the guitar volume. Um, and we were having a conversation about this before we started filming and I thought really that it was a, rather than having a lot of effects loops and sweepable mids mm. and all that kind of thing that it's a bit like when you have an electric guitar and an amplifier and that in itself seems like quite a high tech sort of special effect yeah. situation, an electric yeah. guitar, you know. Yeah, um, and, yeah, and then, then having an amp with gain on it, that was almost the, the first well, real yeah, effect, yeah. you know, other than fuzz pedals and stuff. Yes. But, but, you know, I remember the, the first amps that did have gain on it, it was a thing of wonder. You know, you'd struggled all your life to yeah. eke the tiniest bit of more extra gain out of it. And all those out of it. really powerful pickups Powerful pickups, and everything pickups when they all came all out in the, that, really. in, the, in, the, in the late 70s, early 80s. Mm. Yeah. But you, but you don't need that with this because Orange have supplied you with as much of anything that you can well, and there's possibly another thing need. as well, because as well as this sort of gain, and it does get really dirty. I mean, even with the uh, single coils, and I say these mm. are not not powerful. I can't remember the model at the moment. They are Duncan's, but they're sort of vintage output. Uh, there is um, an EQ lift. And the best way to describe this is it seems to be a slight boost, not a volume boost, but if you wanted to just get things singing a little bit more, then it is foot switchable and it just gives you a little bit more. It doesn't completely change the sound or boost no, the mids no. or anything like that. Um, now, you would normally do that with a foot switch. 
I didn't have one with me, never prepared, but just plug in a jack lead and it does that. So uh, perhaps I can demonstrate mm. that by pulling it out and playing a bit. And to let that go for a little yeah. while just to see. It's given it a real fruity, mm. a real fruity edge to this, not a real fruity lump to the sound, hasn't it? Yes. It re yeah. really does add a little bit like of a that. gain in mids is what it feels yeah. like, but yeah. Um, that, yeah, is, is an like, extra thing. Again, that could be something where you switch that on for a single coil guitar. When you change to a humbucking guitar on stage, you, you don't need it because the humbucking Actually, thing is that's a really excellent doing a point. similar similar job. That's exactly what I do, I think. Yeah. Mm. And leave the EQ settings the same. Yeah. Yeah. We should probably go through some of the sounds that you can get from this. Just have a bit of a play with the controls. And what I've done is set this for the kind of sound that Nev and I were talking about a minute ago. So it's clean, but it's just starting to push a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. Just to smooth out. Um, <clears throat> so I've set the, the gain down at just over two and the masters on, um, I think it's between three and four, uh, and, and the EQ is reasonably flat, so. If I keep playing that as a sort of reference point, mm. apologies if it gets repetitive, but I think it's a good way of. Absolutely, yeah. So um, if we have a little look at this punch control, I'll just max that. A little bit crunchy for my taste mm, mm. sat here, but it might be just the thing. Um, what about if I just edge up this gain a bit and maybe the mids as well? Mm. So the gain's about halfway and the mids I've got way up to about um, seven or eight there. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I'm hearing that go lower and mm, higher. I'm hearing yeah, more yeah, bottom end. Yeah. Um, I might just trim off a little bit of high end and bass, uh, actually. I'll just go a bit more mid focused. I've pushed the gain up mm. to about seven. And with this guitar down to about seven. So you can go from absolutely clean, but yeah. possibly a bit spiky, to that smoother sound that we were talking about. Even though you can hear their definitely single coils, it definitely oh, yeah. pushes it into Angus territory a bit. Yeah, doesn't yeah, it? There, there's a little bit of that. Holding a D chord yeah, and hearing it just it, sort of want to go, if we were yeah, a bit louder, really is. then um, that would have gone. It's very versatile. And again, we say so many times with, with the orange amps, take every, well, we just have said it earlier on, but I'll say it again, you could hear from that, that you never, uh, the, the, amp, the amp never takes over from you. You're in command all the time. Absolutely. And it Even gives you what you ask of it. the EQ lift thing in as well. Mm, I mean, yeah. that takes us a bit further again. For a classic rock, you really shouldn't oh, need no. any more than that. Um, and uh, I can just about reach it from here, the switch that takes it to class A, 30 watt. Mm. Um, so I've backed the gain down a bit. If I very quickly go through the same sort of procedure. If, if anything, lower master volume settings sound a little bit louder on yeah, this. It's just do. that it doesn't go as loud. Chime has become an overused word, but I'm definitely but it, getting But you, you can clearly hear that. I mean, I remember back in, in the old days, turning up to a rehearsal, uh, an audition for an amp, and I had the classic early 60s English Beatle type amp, mm -hmm. and the guy had a, 
a full blown stack, the double stack. And I brought my little combo in and I put it next to his stack and the band all laughed at me. And I was louder than him. Yeah. And mm. that's kind of displaying that, is that clarity and that bloom that you get yeah. um, really gives you presence. And, and I don't mean in a bright well. way. Pardon? And it's coming out the and back it's coming as well. And it's coming out the back as well, yeah. yeah. And reflecting yeah. back off that wall. Mm. So it's a, it's a really interesting sound and you can really tell straight away the different voice that this side of the amps give it's, you. Yeah, it's much more mm. sort of angled. It's, it's hard to explain in words, but yeah, those mm. upper frequencies, but it's not just more trebly. No, I've it's just not. It's added not. added some mids and a bit of gain because I quite fancy mm. the idea of seeing how it reacts to touch mm -hmm. and to the guitar's volume. There's a certain well-known Class A English amp rock oh, guitarist yes. <laughs> who that kind of was slightly rem reminiscent of. Yes, yeah. Yeah. It's still Absolutely, a very full yeah. sound. But, but notice how when Richard turned the volume back on the guitar, it immediately cleaned up. It didn't lose much in volume. No. But it, 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 the clarity came back. So as we were saying earlier, a lot of guitarists now are work, le learning how to do that. Gone are the days when you set everything on max and you jumped on all these pedals to give you everything else. People are learning how to do that now. Well, and funnily enough, I think it's a really practical consideration when your pedal board's miles away. And quite yeah. often, as we were saying earlier, play on a bigger stage and you don't really want to be stuck in one spot. I mean, I'm not Pete no. Townsend, but you know, you want to be able to yeah, sort of walk yeah. around a bit and interact with the band. And if you suddenly remember, oh no, I have to turn my sort of super yes. gain boost on now, then yeah, exactly, exactly. you've got a bit of a run on your hands. Yeah. Um, on a damp stage, that could end badly. Absolutely. And it has. just play pretty much off the cuff as you can probably tell um, I switched the te Telecaster and we would both gone to the 30 watt side of these amps so mm. everything was that little bit more kind of chimey kind of character we were absolutely playing I mean, gutsily but it, it's definitely uh, as much a thing where the, the way that you if you're the kind of player that uses the amps gain structure and the guitars volume it responds differently definitely and, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm not sure how it will translate to, to the listeners, but it's, there is definitely, it does encourage you to play differently. Yeah, I mean, even in the blurb, they say about these amps that you get more of the feel of the changes to tone or the tone structure from the controls in the room than you might necessarily do, say, from you hearing them um, through, these spe through your speakers. Um, but they, they do, when, when we do it, you can feel it in the body. You can, you can definitely feel the resonance yeah, yeah. coming off the amps, can't you? In a, yeah. in a slightly different way, however you, you treat the controls. I think, yeah, there was a little bit less push in the lower frequencies to me and I felt a little bit more yeah. openness at the top. Yeah, definitely. And with a single coil guitar, the telly dip compared to the 335, different animal completely. Mm. Um, you know, I, I didn't have that much gain on it. I put the gain up to about seven I think there and I think it could have taken more because the telly was still relatively clean 
Um, but that was really nice about it because Richard got his pretty throaty. And the, I think the two work really nicely together, the, the single coils, two single coils. Yeah, coil I tires. agree. And, and it's not always the easiest thing to just plug in a single coil guitar no, and no. get a great sound. I think that is something that definitely I still appreciate that when I plug into an amp and I don't have to think, right, OK, so what are we going to do? Run the mids high, run the presence a little bit lower or higher. And, and yeah. sometimes it takes a bit of tweakery. Yeah, uh, but these have definitely. been very easy to get sound. Oh, if if you turned up to your gig and some you were lucky enough to have a roadie to to set your amp mm. up and, and you'd run on the stage late you, and you'd plug straight in your amp, it would never let you down. It would never, even yeah. though you hadn't touched the tone controls, it wouldn't give you a tone so unusable. No, never. no, you'd it be fine. Never. Yeah, the the point about about these amps, and we keep stressing it and stress it just one more time, is that wherever you set anything it's going to sound great. You just might want to slightly change its voice to one degree or another. Yes, With but it's, it's kind of when you turn the, the mid or the treble down or up, I'm finding that it's reacting in the way that I kind of hope it will. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I've had a few experiences you know, with very good high quality amps, but you think, oh, well, I'll change the mid frequency and you think, oh no, put it back. Oh, well, yeah. pass it. You know. And hard. sweeps when it goes. Wham, 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 I, did, you know. I did genuinely you get to the point where none of it none sounds of that's good usable. to me no, anymore. No, it doesn't. 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 And it doesn't. And you go back to the classic sounds that we all refer to all the time. People who write reviews for guitars. When you're chatting with your mates down the pub, you always refer to those old classic sounds. Yeah. Whether they be the Motown sounds of little uh, amps in the studio and and Telecasters and three three fives and stuff, mm. or you know, your Hendrixes and your Claptons and your, yeah. your up to Oasis and, and so on, you know, you, th those are the classic sounds and they were made by proper amps, turned up, working hard. I mean, and uh, I think that these could probably do quite a mean modern rock sound. Um, mm. it's, it's just that they're so good at being the kind of amp that you can control from the guitar, really. And yeah. I think that's probably who they are aimed at. Um, because somebody that wants super filth and crystal yeah. clear, you know, at the flick of a button, probably, probably won't. Definitely, and um, there, there's a, definitely a breed of guitarists that wants the distortion to be amp distortion, not pedal distortion. Yeah. I was talking to somebody the other day, he said, no, I, when, I, when I want distortion, I want it from my amp. I don't want it to be fake from a pedal. I want it to be the amp doing what it was designed to do. And with these amps, um, Adrian Emsley, who, who designs them, he wants them to be used, usable at the max. Yes. And so when that's on 10, it's 10 and it's working as an amp on yeah, 10 should wide work. Open. Yes, it hasn't gone past pushing. its use by mm. Mm. number, you know, as, as so often they do. Um, price wise, um, given that they are hand made, hand wired in England, um, they're about 1800 UK pounds um, and the cabinet the cabinets are about 500 UK pounds so that would translate into whatever your country your currency is and depending um, on where you look a little bit more or a little bit less yeah, yeah. and you know um, that we've looked up street prices around that around that kind of figure and uh, that's a lot of amp you know it's an investment but yeah. it's a serious amount of, of amp but you know our guitars a lot more than oh, yeah. that, you know. So, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot there for your money. Well, I, I think it would last a lifetime, really. Yeah, mm -hmm. and take yeah, care yeah. of it, yeah. and um, and there's there isn't really a situation where I think you would find yourself wishing that you'd bought another amp, you know, or a more powerful no, one, or a less powerful one. You even. And they do that. They, they, you can you can play very very quietly. In fact, I'll quickly do it. If I take that gain down. It was quite high making that noise, sorry. I'll put the master up a little bit. I'll set all of the controls flat with the exception of the treble, which I'll just kick a little bit. I'll put a bit of echo on it and I'll, I'll just give you a nice telly in the middle. Everything kind of nice and bright. That's a really sweet sound. It had a little bit of echo on it. I've got a 
phase uh, uh, chorus pedal there. So you can clean them right up. I mean, obviously, especially with a single coil guitar like this. Um, that I'll put quick do quick on the the bridge pickup. So if you were in the studio and you wanted to play Motown, that would do it for you. Oh yeah, and I reckon on probably quite a lot of stages. Mm -hmm. I mean, the are robust output stage on these. Yeah. I mean, I think that's yeah. going to go pretty loud and clean before. Yeah, and if you set it to, to that, I mean, Rich said earlier on, if you set that to kind of sound, I mean, I didn't have the guitar up. If I'd had the guitar up loud, for a full, that would have been breaking up a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but you get it set to that kind of level then you can manipulate your guitar yeah. to give you a oh, here's, here's it flat out look. So yeah, anyway, we really like these amps very, very much indeed. Yeah. Um, and thanks for joining us. We've had a good time playing these things. I hope you've enjoyed it too. And Richard and I will see you soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.